Hello and welcome. My name is Jessica Mellinger from the University of Michigan, and I'm here today with Dr. Priya Madur and Dr. Hirsch Schroff from Northwestern University. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for being here today. Absolutely. Thank um, thanks for writing a great article for CLD um, about the workup of hyperbilirubinemia, so something that we encounter a lot in the inpatient and outpatient setting. So tell me a little bit about how you approach this when you meet a person who's got a high bilirubin level. What are some of the things that you think about to start off with? I think it's important if you're looking at somebody from the outpatient setting to first delineate, is this from an actual hepatic cause and look at the liver tests themselves? Or is this from another cause such as an acquired cause or is this from a um, hemolytic cause as well? Mm -hmm. And what are the ways that somebody might approach that in terms of testing, that type of thing? Mm -hmm. I, I think the first step is, uh, of course, to examine the remainder of the liver enzymes. Mm -hmm. In the setting in which the liver enzymes are normal, you have an isolated, elevated hyperbilirubinemia, and your next step is going to be to fractionate it, so you mm -hmm. can figure out the proportion of direct to indirect, which will help frame your differential, um, because for indirect hyperbilirubinemia, there's a very specific differential that includes hemolytic disorders, but also certain specific hereditary disorders of bilirubin metabolism. Whereas for direct hyperbilirubinemia in an isolated setting, it's mostly going to be your uh, other some other hereditary causes of hyperbilirubinemia. Mm -hmm. So if you think it might be if it's more indirect and you're kind of thinking, oh, this might not actually be you know necessarily a problem in the liver. What kind of testing do you usually order if you're looking down that pathway of diagnosis? So I think it's important to get your LDH, haptoglobin, mm -hmm. and reticulocyte like count if you think this is hemolysis related. Mm -hmm. Very good. Anything else at all that you look at? I think it's important to uh, just do a quick review of the patient's history. Mm -hmm. There's some very less common causes that you want to rule out. So if they had a recent trauma and a hematoma that's mm -hmm. resorbing, you can have a hyperbilirubinemia. Of course, massive blood transfusions will cause some increased erythrocyte turnover, which can cause an isolated indirect hyperbilirubinemia. Sure. Certain medications that are a little bit less common but mm -hmm. uh, can impair conjugation of bilirubin, and um, so a review of their medication list will be important as well. Great. And so when you think it might be more the direct, so you're looking more at maybe true liver causes, how do you think about that and how do you split that out and work that up? Absolutely. So you first obviously want to make sure there's no biliary obstruction. So mm -hmm. if I have a high suspicion for that, I'd like to get some imaging first there. Mm -hmm. um, and then if I am worried about some intrinsic cause of liver disease, um, think about does this patient need any kind of other testing for viral hepatitis or underlying liver dysfunction? And if then that's not there, then uh, within the differential, I think about Gilbert's disease as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are there ever times when in this workup you might consider something like a liver biopsy? Is that something that you think about when you're working up this uh, this, this indication? I think mm -hmm. if there's any evidence of um, other sorts of liver injury, an mm -hmm. elevated AST or ALT, an elevated mm -hmm. alkaline phosphatase, and your serologic workup, as Dr. Madur mentioned, for viral hepatitis or autoimmune types of hepatitis are a negative, and you're still at a loss, a liver biopsy at that point may be helpful. Mm -hmm. But in the setting of an isolated hyperbilirubinemia uh, without any other evidence of liver injury, there's rare cases in which a liver biopsy may be necessary. Um, comparing inpatient to outpatient, are there certain things when you're an inpatient, um, if, or if you're on the inpatient service and you see someone who has hyperbilirubinemia that you think of more so as opposed to that, things that rise up to the top of that list? More Absolutely. So. You think about ischemia or resolving ischemia, mm -hmm. and then medication effect is sure. also something that I always think about in the differential to make sure there's no medication-induced hyperbilirubinemia mm -hmm. as well. Very good. Great. Anything else you'd like to tell us about your article? No. Thank you for having us. Great. Thank you so much. Thank I appreciate it. Us.